into the next church and some beautiful countryside uh, in Kent. We're actually, uh, I believe, we're in Higham at the moment. So it's a really beautiful piece of countryside, and I uh, thought you might appreciate it. As I say, spring's here now. It's early May. Everything's starting to come back to life, and it's uh, a beautiful day. Quite a bit of traffic around today. There we are, just see it in front of us now. It'd be really lovely if this was uh, was open, but we'll see. St James in Corley. Come up around the side here and uh, have a walk, and hopefully be able to get in and uh, have a look. As I say, I've been here before, so I think it appeared in one of my uh, videos in the past, but uh, I managed to get into it, so let's take a look. Again, we'll have a good morning, firstly, and uh, I'll show you the, the area that we're currently in. See there, it's all farmland. And a beautiful little uh, converted barn on the opposite side. There we go, and that's the, the church itself, which some of you may remember from a past video, but we'll take a look in the hope the church is now open. So that's the uh, the spire on the front elevation as you walk into the church itself. You actually have to walk around the side to get to the main entrance. Look at these uh, little graves here. Look, they're really small. I can only assume they're all children's graves. And they've all got 1771-ish kind of time. So I assume they're all children. Maybe plague victims or something horrendous like that, but it looks like they're all interred at the same time. Look at this uh, entrance way, it's beautiful, isn't it? A bit of work needed around the top there, but for an old church as it is, it's still in really good condition. Would have a, oh, it's a, again, it's a conservation trust church. The door's not as ornate, uh, beautiful, not as ornate as uh, some I've seen in the past. But the church itself is exquisite. Look at that uh, stained glass there and the the tower itself. You can make out some old beams that are there, some really old oak beams. Not sure where they've come from. Just leaned up against the wall. Wow, look at that old door there. Look. The way it's sitting, look, it's uh, so naively made, but it's still there. A big lock. It's obviously been uh, picked up at some point in time, but this door is absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really old and Gnarly, look at that, it's beautiful. Coat of arms up there, beautiful picture. Got these little small Bibles. <laughs> Don't know how anyone would read that, it's so small. And that font, really beautiful, look at that. Again, really naively carved, but it's uh, it's really old and again lead lined. Such a treat. 
treat to uh, actually getting this one. I didn't think I would. Very old stones down here in Terminus. Let's have a look at this one here. It's beautiful. Then you can make out the uh, maybe monks or something there. I would have thought, like a lot of these old ones here, they would have been inlaid with brass um, or copper. Brass, I think, and they just pour it in there so it actually shows up the, the figures. But that's uh, long gone. Or well, at least that's what I've seen in other churches. Ah, oh, there we are. That's what I mean. You see there, brass insert. But the writings, uh, I'm not sure if it's Old English or what it is, but um, maybe French. I don't know. But I can't make it out, but it's extremely old. Isn't that beautiful. Some really old, beautiful stained glass. There's a pulpit there. Now, as you can see, there's some candles and uh, places to burn and that. So, and there's cots and chairs. So clearly this is used if you want to stay overnight and pay for the privilege of uh, sleeping in the church, which is really unusual. I'm not quite sure. I suppose, um, I don't know what type of people would. I suppose my brother would. He uh, does his ghost investigations in, in church and journeyman. I'll leave a link in the bottom, actually to his channel so he can have a look but I'm sure it's one that he'd probably pay to stay in and do a night vigil if you like beautiful old organ there lovely pipes and panning up to the again English oak ceiling some lovely carving there on the, uh, the cross beam I've never seen a church used for this kind of thing people to sleep those old carbon there look at those quite grand aren't they these uh, these cutouts there I suppose in the day they had uh, beautiful candles and things in there I'll say I love the altar. Again, a really beautiful, vivid stained glass window. Really lovely. I say the camera doesn't always give uh, the best impression of these windows. I mean, the colours are so vivid, vibrant, but you don't always see it. Again, some really old chairs there. Quite beautiful. And that's a, a look down the, uh, the church itself. information on arrival back so they call this champion I suppose church camping and it's very unusual but I suppose it's a way of getting donations I suppose but in a way it's uh, I don't know not overly keen on the idea. It's such a beautiful church, and it really should be, you know, brought back to its former glory and just uh, use of people to appreciate the space, basically, and just enjoy. But a really 
really lovely church. Looks like we've got a uh, Ours was the marsh country, down by the river. Within, as the river wound 20 miles of the sea. My first most vivid and broad impression of the identity of things seems to have been gained on a memorable raw afternoon towards evening. At such a time, I found out for certain that this bleak place, overgrown with nettles, was the churchyard, and that Philip Pirrip, late of this parish, and also Georgiana, there we go. Where was that? You pick it up. It says an extract from Great Expectations, 1861. So I suppose it's something to listen to if you come here. But again, just a quick pan around of this beautiful church. Definitely one to visit if you're in the calling area. We'll have a little look around the, uh, the churchyard. There we go. Just get a little bit there inside Cooling Church. The front date's from 1200. So, yeah, so originally it was 1200, obviously. The uh, the church was built, started, if you like, and parts added throughout the centuries. But a beautiful church. And I'm actually pleased I got in here, um, which I couldn't do before. A lovely day. Let's have a little look around while we're here. I'm sure you remember it from my last video, but uh, yeah, it's lovely. Look at this here. Look, there's a little little door there. Oh my god, it looks like it got a wasp nest look, in the church. But there's a little little door here. Look. Not quite sure what that was used for. Look at that, as you see there, look beautiful. Kent countryside there. Looks like a fairly recent interment. 2020. Much loved husband, father, and grandfather. Resting where no shadows fall. Bless you. So you can make out in the distance there. It's the it is a transport of ships. So it's a. I'm not sure what dock set is over there, whether it's Gravesend or something, but. You can see them slowly going up that estuary there. And a really beautiful churchyard and spire. Yeah, it's lovely. So I'm really glad I got into it this time. It's a shame when you get to these churches and you really want to go inside. That's all you want to do and have a look. As well as look around the graveyard and it's locked for whatever reason. Beautiful smell of these uh, Wildflowers and daffodils. There's a few tulips appearing as well. It's lovely. Look at the colour over on those graves. It's so beautiful. There's a lovely breeze in the air, and it's uh, starting to warm up now. It's not too much for chill. That was that. That was the uh, the 
churchyard in Corlin that I wanted to see and I have now so I hope you enjoyed a look around this beautiful church thanks again for joining me and I hope you join me on the next one you have a lovely day see you again goodbye mm -hmm.